Thank you. We love to talk about the future. We love to think about the future. Some of it do it from the perspective of investments, venture capitalists, for example. Some people have complex spreadsheets to predict the future. Uh, people are inventors. I'm none of those. I'm a consultant. I've been working in the domain of augmented reality for over a decade with some of the brightest minds, some of them are here, and on some of the biggest projects to date. Over the last four years, I've focused exclusively on enterprise augmented reality. And with some of my clients and other colleagues, we formed an industry consortium. It's called the AR for Enterprise Alliance, and you might look that up. And it's on the basis of this experience over the last uh, 10 or more years that I'm going to share with you what I think is most important about the future. I think augmented reality adoption is going to have huge economic impacts. I'm not an economist, remember? See that little dot? That's what augmented reality is today. It's tiny. It's so small, it's hard to measure. Most of the people who know about augmented reality today are part of the information age. We've benefited from billions of technology, of dollars spent on information technology to make us smarter, faster. We work in symbols. The knowledge workers, those who know about augmented reality today, are people who have some exposure to this technology. We create data, we use data, we share information. But we're not the target audience for augmented reality. We're cerebral, the people who should be using augmented reality and who is going to benefit from it on a regular basis are the people who work and live in the physical world. They move things around. They repair things that are broken. They create new experiences with the physical world. And as a result, because they are connected very tightly to the physical world, they have a lot in common, or they have benefited a great deal from another revolution that happened 300 years ago, the Industrial Revolution. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to draw some parallels between the Industrial Revolution and the Information Age, some contrasts as well. There were several innovations, and each time that we had innovation, we saw and very, very significant increases in productivity and efficiency with which energy was transformed. The first practical steam engine, early 1700s, it had one use. It was to pump water out of a tin mine. And it was created because people who were mining in Britain had a problem. People couldn't pull the water out of the mine fast enough. We need to create a machine to replace the human being and to make that in workplace safer for the people who worked in those environments. Now, about 75 years later, all that technology, more innovations came along, and that motor became much smaller. Now we could put it inside a building, and we could use it to operate weaving looms and spinning jennies and transform the textile industry. And gradually, manufacturing came about another very profound transformation in efficiency. And then 150, almost 200 years after the first steam engine, which took place, it was in, in Britain, where there was a you know, this, there was coal and there was iron ore and there were colonies that needed all these manufactured goods. Now you had all these manufactured goods. You need to move all these people around in their automobiles. Those of us who rode trains or drove our cars to, to come here today are still benefiting from these innovations, these profound uh, efficiency of converting work, uh, converting coal and oil into work, the work of displacing us. So the Industrial Revolution made humans more productive by adding machines to us. They replaced us in many dangerous situations. And they converted stored energy into work. The information age is also going to increase human productivity with information, make our environments safer, and we're also going to increase the human power of creativity because we're bringing this information, some of it 
invisible, a lot of the information that we want to use in augmented reality is otherwise invisible. We're making it visible. And we're using the power of our bodies, our dexterity, our hands, our mobility, our ability to go places that were not planned uh, before uh, the need arose. And what this means is that we're going to use information better. We are experiencing with AR adoption a trend, another bump in efficiency following the bump that was created from mobile platforms and the bump that was from the introduction of the internet 25 years ago and, and, and many other significant improvements in efficiency. Let me translate that for you a little bit into some, some more concrete economic impacts. A lot of what I've been studying and what other people are experiencing today is that augmented reality can help some industries, some very mature industries, improve their productivity. Companies today are putting augmented reality in place. They're introducing it to visualize information that's otherwise invisible to the user or not available for some other reason. So their goal is to bring that information where and when needed so that the person who needs that information doesn't have to go running around looking for the answer in a manual or maybe uh, having to create that information themselves from scratch. There are subject matter experts who are remote from the person and the technician in the field. They need help in using cameras and augmented reality to combine knowledge and the physical world. The person who's working on a particular task can perform that with fewer errors. They can benefit from the knowledge of others who may not be physically uh, co-located with them. And they can also uh, capture what is being done in the physical world using those cameras, perhaps mounted on their head or elsewhere in their workplace environment, to attest to the correct completion of a task and to the compliance with the policies. And they may be the corporate policies or government policies of some kind. So by reducing the time to perform tasks, especially rare and complex tasks, by reducing the errors and reducing the, the risk of non-compliance, we're reducing costs. And together, all these factors boost the operational efficiency in the workplace. Every workplace, you ask? No, I don't believe so. I don't believe all workplaces are the same. I think that actually, ironically, these very old, mature industries, some of them hundreds of years old, some of them thousands of years old, if you think of healthcare as an industry, are the ones that are going to benefit. If you haven't already, please go and talk with or hire someone from these industries and ask them how they're going to use augmented reality. What you're going to learn is that these industries share some attributes in common. The first is that they deal with objects in the physical world. They're not, about, not entirely about symbolic manipulation. These objects in the physical world have a lot of infrastructure around them. You have manufacturing plants and miles of pipes and wires and heating and cooling systems, fleets of trucks, ships, airplanes, just to move these physical objects around. And a lot of people are involved in that process as well. So these companies, these industries, have large workforces. That means very small incremental improvements in efficiency of every unit of worker translates to the bottom line. They work in global scales. They buy and sell on the global market. But they also have, in the physical world, a very local existence. They have, to, they have challenges such as language barriers and logistics in moving their products around the world. They also, due to the size and the nature of the objects, have a lot of inherent risk, danger, either to human life or to precious and, and valuable objects. And so they have to put in place a lot of procedures to reduce risk, Redu risk to money, risk to people, etc. And they may have voluntary regulations or government regulations that guide how and when they do business. So when you look back at the industries I showed you on the previous slide, and you think about this, look for industries that share these attributes. That's where you're going to find incremental improvements in productivity. But I'm now going to talk to you about some projects that I've been working on for 
an awfully long time, I hesitate to say how long, that are, I believe are going to introduce very disruptive changes, that they're going to come on swiftly and they're going to create a big impact. They'll be adopted um, quite quickly because their benefits will be so great. So these step functions as a result of people taking risk with their money, with their capital. Now the first of these, I'm gratified to say, uh, is coming along very quickly in the next uh, couple of years. The photorealistic capture of the real world using a lot of new technologies, but also technologies that have been maturing very quickly over the last uh, 18 months are going to permit us to more accurately recognize and track the physical world. And if we can better recognize the physical world, then we can bring the digital assets into that world with more realism. And let's face it, when you use an augmented reality experience today, it doesn't look very realistic. All right? Now, Let's dig in a little deeper. You have seen that the, the impacts of these 3D capture technologies over the last five years, it used to take hours, maybe days, to create a digital model of a real object. But today, you can take combined photogrammetry with dynamic SLAM, and you can create a digital model in living color and three dimensions in a matter of minutes. This takes 23 seconds. Okay. And did you notice that the algorithms automatically removed the hands? So it, it understood the occlusion and compensated for that. Very important. Now we can combine this middleware with fast chips, 5G networks, algorithms to, con to uh, correct for distortions and uh, deformation. We can combine that with security systems. And let's make it all scalable while, while we're at it. We're going to push the physical world into the digital world. And what that's going to do is create a very, very big catalog, a databases with spatial temporal references, tags, and, and these security systems. And we're going to have enormous catalogs of realistic augmented reality experiences. This brings me into the more distant future. What the heck are we going to do with all those experiences we can't even find the experiences. There will be too many. So we need to, to develop new services to help us produce continuous automatic experiences that combine the digital and the physical world. OK, leap with me into the future. You have experiences about everything. Every person, place, and thing has data about it. That's public data, private data, group data, commercial data, government data. Everything is has information from the time of conception or design until, it decease, until it's deceased. So we can't find what we need. Today, we can already start to overcome that problem by using text and visual search. We can use the user's context to help find those unique pieces of information we could benefit from using. But I believe we need to combine this with discovery services. What do I mean by discovery services? It's a, it's a new module, a new piece of technology that is going to fit between the publishing environment of augmented reality experiences and the delivery, the presentation. Between those, there are some missing blocks. And I'm not going to try to convince you that this is exactly the architecture we're going to have in an augmented reality systems in five years. But I believe there will be need and a great benefits in having a way to identify what I need, where, in which catalog, and it's going to have to be distributed because I only want to know about things that are local. I don't need to know about things that are on the other side of the planet. So there's a local component to all of this as well. The local world, symbolized in this globe, picks up the stimuli with our sensors, matches the catalog entries, and then brings that asset back up to the user. And this is going to have great benefits to the publishers of content because they will not need to create an app for every single person, place, and thing at every moment in time. It's going to reduce their overhead while at the same time increasing the potential target audience. Double, double whammy. Good bonus. 
the end users won't have to choose uh, just one device or many devices. They'll get to choose the device and software of, that they prefer. And they'll have the greatest depth of, of information and potential experiences. For that, I hope they will pay, which will return on investment to those who have taken the risk and put their capital into these kinds of services. So I've talked to you about some of the ways that experiences will impact business, but it's always through the human, because augmented reality is in increasing the reality and the experience of the human being. I've talked to you about how the information age has getting, is getting a big leap forward as a result of augmented reality, making information use more efficient. There's a lot of parallels with the Industrial Revolution, and we must not forget that the Industrial Revolution didn't just produce benefits. It also produced horrific work conditions, and people suffered before reaching where we are today. So to reach its full potential, AR is going to bring benefits to people as well as to the businesses that, work, that, they, that they are working for. And it's going to have local as well as global impacts. Thank you for your attention and for making my life richer. <laughs>